I've actually brought along a pig's leg. Very, very similar tissue to a human, so let's just see what happens to this. I've got to venture into the Gar's own underwater world. None of the Gar show any intent to harm me. In my view, it's the alligator Gar itself that has been the victim. It's amazing to get this close. This fish really is a miracle of evolution, a true survivor. But if anyone is going to see the real giants, this fish needs to be allowed to grow without persecution. Maybe then we'll get to see those 14-footers again. Oh, ah, that was, that, that was, that was an experience. Oh, I have to say the size, the size and the aspect of those fish though, when I first saw them was really quite intimidating. But I think this is a very, very misunderstood animal. And I think it really is time that we just try to understand this fish a little bit better. This is actually working really well. I've got the lure in picture. It's bang in the middle of the screen. I'm actually watching. You know, normally it's just there and you've no idea what's happening. Um, I can actually see my lure out behind the boat. A fish, I think it was a carp. Yeah. Oh, it's, we're bumping over the bottom. Oh dear, what's going on there? Right, I need to in a bit, in a bit, in a bit. No, it's bumping, it's bumping. I've lost the lure, haven't I? I've lost the lure. I think the camera might have been bashed around a bit, though. <laughs> Not robust enough, unfortunately, to withstand being bashed along the bottom. But other than that, actually doing very well. Before that, there was this grey shadow that appeared from nowhere, which sort of came and went, and it could have been a catfish investigating it and shying off at the last minute, or it could have just been a rock going past, I don't know. What I'm about to see is another unexpected aspect of these fish's behavior. What we're doing is we're doing something called clonking, and it's making a, sending a sound wave down into the water. And we can see on the sonar. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Direct on your lures. Oh, there it is, there, there it is. I've got it. There's a catfish, there's a catfish, there's a catfish. Yeah, it's right under the lure. Yeah. Fantastic. I see him on the yeah, yeah. There he is, there he is, tentacles. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, what's happened now? And it's coming up now, right in the middle of the screen. Fantastic. Look at that. He's attacking the camera. What this has just demonstrated is that when you've got splashing, when you've got commotion on the surface, the catfish, which you know they live on the bottom, they will come up to investigate. Ah, oh, yes, 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 yes. Bottom of the screen. There it is, there it is, there it is. Look at that. There it is. Oh, he's come off. Come off. This is amazing. Getting a fish on camera, taking a bait, attracted in by sound and vibration. Like sharks to a plane crash, these fish fear nothing. It even attacks the camera. I'm pushing my luck, but I want to know if tigerfish are man-eaters. And I'm too close to pull out now. Just opening the fish bag. I do wonder about the uh, advisability of being down here with a bag of bloody chopped up fish. Within minutes, the tigerfish are back. And this time, they're coming in to check me out. They're getting closer, they're getting closer and closer all the time. I brace myself for the jaws. And then... Nothing. 
I'm in plain sight of perhaps 50 hungry tigerfish, yet they're refusing to touch me. This is really quite incredible. They're so bold underwater, coming so close. It really shows that hunger overrides all other emotions. In theory, I'm an easy meal, but the fish seem more curious than murderous. They've got the jaws and teeth to attack me, but plainly they don't see me as food. I'm simply not on their menu. Like most people, if I jump in the water, I don't think I float, even after a heavy lunch. And it's, uh, it's not too difficult. I'm flapping my arms a little bit and my legs, but the question is, how big would a fish need to be to pull me under? Oh. Right, I've got one dive weight on at the moment, four and a half pounds, and I can support it, actually. <clears throat> That's harder, it's harder. Nine pounds now, doubling the rate of paddling, but I can still just about keep myself on the surface. Right, I can support nine pounds with a bit of flapping and uh, flailing of my legs. Um, we've just weighed this rock. This is gonna make it up to 20 pounds. I'll just see how I do against that combined weight in the water. That was actually very interesting. 20 pounds of weight attached to me. I could just about keep my head above water. Uh, it was a struggle. I reckon another five pounds and I'd have just gone, no matter how much my arms and legs would have been flailing around. And that's, that's interesting, because if you ask most people how big a fish would have to be to pull a body underwater, they'd say probably, you know, something about the same size as that person. Now, I weigh about 175 pounds and on land, I can take care of myself, but in the water, you know, a fish would just have to exert a pull of 25 pounds, about a seventh of my body weight. And, you know, I wouldn't stand a chance. I'd just be gone. And if I took a lung full of water underneath there, then nobody would ever see me again. Yeah, it's, it is a ray. It's definitely a ray. I recognize the dramatic markings. It's a deadly Matoro stingray. Matoros aren't giants, but this one's a perfect size for my experiment. Right, now it's one thing seeing that spine flailing around. I want to see what happens when it makes contact with something, with flesh. I've actually brought along a pig's leg. Very, very similar tissue to a human, so let's just see what happens to this. That went right in the whole length of the spine, and then it seemed to almost put its body weight behind it and really push it in. It went right up to the hilt of the spine. I'm surprised by this. I thought a strike would be more haphazard. The ray appears to line up on its target like a marksman, aiming above the point where the pressure is applied to its body before thrusting its spine deep into the tissue with every ounce of its power. As the tail retracts, more than a hundred backward-facing barbs tear through flesh like a hunting knife. After the strike, the ray's instinct is to flee. I repeat the test, and this time, something remarkable happens. That hasn't come out. That is still attached, that's still attached. It's the proof I was looking for. A raised spine can stay embedded in its victim. There's obviously a certain random element here. If it goes in a certain place, it's going to come out. If it goes in another place, it's going to come out. Once in a while, though, it's going to get stuck on something, stuck on a bit of tissue, and it's not going to come out. <laughs> Electric eels can keep on shocking out of water, but the rubber gloves we're wearing protect us. Chris, are you OK? Are you responding? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, 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 good. Right, we might need some first aid here. Yeah. 